Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline is friend of the program and one of the elite members of BYU Sports Nation, Super Bowl champion, Pro Football Hall of Famer. His name is Steve Young. Steve, it's been too long. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Yeah, really. You guys, I figured you'd call me every once in a while, but this is great. I love it. Well, I feel totally connected to you. I listen to you, and uh, I just asked you both offline. As you guys have a long-term contract. You need a USFL, you know, 40-year, 40, 40 million kind of thing going. And you yeah. Said, you got to figure it out. So we, we asked for those good, exact, good. exact numbers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, we're going to need you to review the legal documentation at some point, if that's okay, Steve. Yeah, well, you, well, you don't want me, because I didn't do a very good job, because uh, I, 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 the annuity kind of, oh, well, long story. <laughs> hey, we enjoyed the shout-out you gave to BYU on Monday night after the win against Wisconsin. Uh, so let's go back to that moment. Uh, what were you thinking when you realized that BYU was going to pull off one of the greatest road upsets they've enjoyed in program history? I know. I have to admit, I had very low expectations, and I think our offense and not being able to throw the ball. And one thing I knew, and I saw that from opening day, is that we will compete with anybody in the at the line of scrimmage, and that's huge. In football, everyone talks about: Did you win the line of scrimmage? Did you win the line of scrimmage. I think that our offense and defensive lines can go. I mean, I think can go nationwide, and I think they prove that. That's the, the the roots of why we were able to beat Wisconsin in Wisconsin was at the line of scrimmage because we got guys. Probably, you know, they, they're not going to get pushed around. And that's why at Camp Randall, they always get pushed around by Wisconsin. I mean, one of the biggest bullies, you know, uh, in, the, in the country. And they just, we just, we're bigger. I mean, we're bigger than most people, especially when a non conference team comes in. They just get, they just pushed around. And it just it didn't happen. And when it doesn't happen, Wisconsin's like, hey, 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 wait a second. Well, well, who are these guys? Who are these guys? <laughs> you know, these guys are huge and they're, and they're athletic and. So it's our offensive and defensive lines right now that are at the root of why we're able to beat Wisconsin. It was super fun for me because we're all I'm for everybody. It's just so, it's so exciting, and you can't believe it. You're like, oh my gosh, this is and when you missed a field goal, and you, this is incredible. I remember when I was super young, we beat Texas A&M when, in like 1976, I want to say, way back with Mark Wilson, and it was huge. It was just it was like the first time we'd ever done anything that the nation could go, wow, who are these guys? And then, you know, then there was other times, during, you know, during Jim's time and my time where we played in UCLA or, or uh, uh, I think we went to, uh, I uh, uh, can't remember exactly what it was during Jim's time, but we'd always have these big kind of iconic wins, and they've kept coming. I mean, I saw a stat the other day about, you know, in, in our independence, unless in since 2009 or 10, we've beaten, like, the list of teams that we've gone and beaten is really pretty, pretty incredible. And I think it's important because being independent, you got to have these marquee wins because next week we play McNeese State, you know. So like we have to, we have to do this. And so starting two and one, I mean, all that's super exciting. And so I, I mean, I, Randy Moss started, to give, uh, you know, he was saying something at the end. I'm like, hey, wait a second, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> That was fantastic. Um, you talked about kind of the, where BYU won that game, and it was clearly in the trenches. So what do you think of this kind of new look, new identity BYU football? I, I don't think it needs to be. I mean, look, this is not, we're not going down to Pete Van Valkenburg. We're not going to just grind it. I mean, look, <laughs> we have to grind it out. We'll do it. But, I mean, we need to be uh, – I, mean, I don't know. I, I, may, I People think, well, you know, you want it to be like it was when you were there. And I think, well, no, but that's just – I know that the nation, like you think about perception, perception is BYU throws the football. We were, we were one of the first, us in Stanford and maybe Miami. And we were probably the best at it in, in 1978 and 1979. Before, everyone was on the wishbone that BYU was throwing the football. It's really kind of in our DNA. And so we should be, we should be, we should find the coaches to do it. We should find the quarterback to do it. We should find the offensive line to protect it and the receivers to catch it. We should lead the country in, 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 in throwing the football. That's what we should, we should at least have that as an aspiration. That's aspirational. It doesn't have to happen. We can win any way you want. We can win three to nothing. As long as we're beating people, that's great. I'm not saying that you can't do that. I'm just saying aspirationally, we should always be seeking to fulfill the measure of our DNA, right? That's like how we want to do it. Uh, but like right now, with Squally, that's what we've we got a great offensive line. We can control the line of scrimmage. Let's go, let's go win the big games. Let's go to Washington. Let's go to Mid-Day State. Let's win that way. But aspirationally, let's not be satisfied. We know the, who we should be. Let's go continue to, to, to press into it and lean into it. It's a football Friday. We've got Steve Young with us on BYU Sports Nation. Steve, let's talk about the BYU quarterback right now, Tanner Mangum. 
was given a high grade from Pro Football Focus for his performance against Wisconsin despite only 12 of 22, 89 yards, and no touchdown passes. But his offensive coordinator, Jeff Grimes, complimented him on how he managed the game. And there's this funny ideal that being a game manager is a bad thing in football. I don't know. What do you think of Tanner Mangum and his role as the game manager at Wisconsin? Yeah. So it's used, it's used uh, derogatorily to, to, to describe someone who can't, you know, uh, is not expansive. Is not someone who can go win a game with his arm and be the reason. Uh, but, but the truth of what you guys are talking about is, I'm going to say 60% of the job, maybe more, is managing everything and handling all the – you touch the ball every, every down – if you're man, you got to manage everybody and the emotional state of everybody, the physical state of everybody, and get people lined up, get get the right thing done, throw the ball very efficiently, don't take too many chances, don't lose the game. See, a lot of quarterbacks lose games. And it's like you can't do that. Managing the game is not losing it, right? And that's something as well. That's not nothing. And so I think that you know when you say it as a positive, it's really you're doing all the things that a quarterback, you know, the the, the science of quarterbacking, the science of you know, actually, you know, just basically doing what's in the playbook to go, go, go and act is, is not nothing. So you should say to people, nice job. You managed it. You did a great job. We won a game. That's what we asked you to do, if that's what we're asking him to do. Um, I think there's a lot more to quarterbacking, uh, but it's, it's, it's more the art of figuring out how to actually – and, you know, you need the coaches to be alongside you. There's a lot of teams, like Trent Dilfer when he won the Super Bowl at Baltimore, he, told, he, he said that he, coaches said, don't, no, we don't want you to be expansive. We want you to just, just manage it. Don't do it anymore. And they were very specific about it. And so in, in situations like that, you're just – he says, I, I did the best I could with what I was asked to do. And I don't know whether Grimes, Coach Grimes is explaining to him, we want you to manage the game and know more. I'd like to know that. I can't imagine that's the case. But certainly doing it is good. That's great. Keep that, keep that up. I would hope that we'd be looking for more because what I just said earlier, aspirationally, that's not who we want to be. Let's, let's lean into it, especially the guy that can throw the ball. Let's talk about some of the Cougars in the NFL that have been impressive thus far this season, including a guy for your Niners, Fred Warner is wearing the green dot, uh, starting at middle linebacker on defense there, 22 tackles in two games. What do you think so far of Fred Warner? Well, the coaching staff, especially with Kyle, the 49ers, and John Lynch, they don't, especially John Lynch because he's a defender. Fred didn't do that, just kind of wander into that job. I mean, he earned it, and he earned it in a, in a lightning flash. It was like every day I heard more and more about Fred. Every day it was like, you can't believe this kid. It's amazing. This is a, and so here he is. Now, uh, it's such a baptism by fire i mean last week uh, you know i saw 16,000 crossing routes and fred's like hey wait a second like, i've come from everywhere <laughs> and uh, uh and you can see that he's still young um and he's gonna be tested i mean every week this week with the weapons and the homes uh, you know it's like he's gonna say at the end of the uh, game this weekend he's gonna think wow that was that was really something i learned a lot i mean if he can if he can survive it stay on the field and go through a full year in that role He's going to be great. And it's just the key is that there's not so many mistakes because you're so young that you can't stay on the field. So right now, great. Super happy with it for him. And I think he'll be one of the leaders and one of the guys that you'll know in the league. But he's got to figure out, you know, he's going to have to learn. <laughs> he's been learning super fast. He's got to keep up the pace because um, the, the defense for the 49ers is transitioning. And they've got, you know, they're going to, they're going to struggle with pass rush. they got one guy. They're going to struggle with all this cross routes. They're going to try to confuse the young linebackers. And then they don't have a shut down corners necessarily. At least proven until Richard Sherman's 100 percent that they can actually use that as a as a weapon as well. So they're going to they're going to all going to be under pressure, including Fred, and especially this weekend. So those are those are the keys for him to kind of stay on the field. BYU Athletic Hall of Famer, Pro Football Hall of Famer, Steve Young with us on BYU Sports Nation. Taysom Hill, and I know you're a big fan of Taysom, Steve, is one of the more intriguing cases in the National Football League right now because he's a quarterback. He wants to be a quarterback, but he's making an impact in several ways on special teams. What do you think of Taysom Hill's current performance and his future with the Saints and potentially as a quarterback? Well, I love that Sean Payton loves Payton. I mean, loves Taysom. You know what I mean? Like, he loves the kid, and, I, and he should. And I love that he's being appreciated for his athleticism, for his, you know, willingness and a lot of coaches, just, they don't pay attention. They're like, the uh, third quarterback, I don't care. You know, whatever you're doing. It's like they, they, I think they, they really, I think they're enjoying 
the, the, to kind of expand on what Taysom can do. And I think Taysom is doing the right thing. He's waiting to play quarterback, but a lot of times you wait in the NFL in the third spot. You n- it never happens, ever. But look, at, I think he's closer to being a quarterback in the NFL by doing these kinds of things. And if he can continue and actually expand on it in that role, then, then I, I really do believe that he can, if he, if he keeps working on the craft, all of a sudden he's back up, and all of a sudden Drew Brees retires, and they got to find somebody. And that guy, maybe they draft guy number one, and comes in, he can't play. And then all of a sudden, Taysom's playing. He's playing well. He's handling all the stuff. And now he makes a career of it. So I, I, I love watching him do these fun things. That's what I would have done. It's what I did. I remember when Joe was playing, and I was so frustrated, and Bill's, you know, Bill had, uh, uh, you know, kind of threw me in and kept throwing me in. And I thought, Bill, I need to play more. He put me receiver. I lined up like 20 times at receiver. <laughs> and, 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 and I'd come back to home like, Joe, I'm open. And he's like, I'm never throwing it to you, bro. So don't worry about it. Because <laughs> like, like, he knew he didn't want me with the football in my hands. You know, it's like, no way he's going to give these throwing it to me. So I love that, that, that that's happening for Taysom. And that's why Joe's Joe, right? That's great. Um, what's... That's why we're all who we are, man. It's tough out there, bro. Yeah. I mean, like... Throwing you the ball? You're good. You're going to dance around and then they'll pay you a quarter. Okay, what... let's finish with this. What's more likely, Taysom Hill throws a TD this year or returns a kickoff for a touchdown? Right now, return the kickoff, right? Because he's going yeah. less, you know, less guys get hurt. Um, no question that uh, he's going to, they're going to try to, I think they realize, well, let's get the guy the ball. Let's figure out, the, how can we get the ball in his hands? Because he's, uh, he does some really cool stuff. And so, yeah, I think he could return a, a, a kickoff for a touchdown, no question. But Drew's not throwing it to Taysom, just like you told us with Joe. No way, right? I know. I think, well, Drew would throw it to him, though. I, know, I think he would. <laughs> he's just got to. Got to get on the field, <laughs> <laughs> Steve. It's always great to catch up with you. Uh, we've got an open seat in Studio B at all times for you. Whenever you're around, uh, you're always welcome here. And uh, we'll get to work on the annuities in our uh, contract that is under consideration. <laughs> yeah, let me know if you need any help. I've got a deep experience. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, unfunded Steve. Unfunded annuities. <laughs> <laughs> great stuff, man. Thanks so much. Okay, guys. See you. Big thanks to Steve Young on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future. He thinks we're kidding. Uh, He got a law degree from BYU. (laughs) 